Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, in the studio. Thank God it's Friday. We made it, my guy. The St. Jude's Classic in Memphis is a tour championship qualifier. And for those of us that don't follow golf that closely, what does that mean? What it means is that when you have the tournaments during the course of the year, all we ever make any media hype about is the amount of money that they win. But the players are all also competing for FedEx points. It all ends with the FedEx Championship, which is coming up in two weeks in Atlanta. Well, those points accrued during the course of the year are very important to the players because at the end of the counting period, which is with the start of yesterday's tournament in Memphis, the top 70 players are the ones who are allowed to compete. That's all that are playing in Memphis is 70. And what they're competing for is not only the top prize money, but the right to go on. At the end of this tournament on Sunday, the field will be cut to the top 50. And those 50 will go to the BMW Classic in Chicago, and that's next weekend at Olympia Fields. And then after that, the field is cut to 30. And those 30 players will go for the first prize, which is $18 million. And they'll play it at East Lake in Atlanta. So all this is very important. There are other... Uh, facts involved to not just the money factor, but the players are also competing for automatic qualifying roles in next year's tournaments too, and that's that's very important. Anyway, at the end of the first round, it's Jordan Spieth who has the lead. He shot a 700 par. Tom Kim was in with a 600, and it goes now to the top 50 golfers. So the play is very intense, and it will conclude on Sunday, and then the field's got to 50, and we go from there. No room for error in the next few weeks with these guys, man. All right, uh, speaking of error, though, last night, of course, the preseason kicked off with uh, two games, Texans-Patriots and the Seahawks and Vikings. Man, if the preseason actually counted, the Texans would be off to a great start. (laughs) They aren't a bad team. They're a lot better from what they had been, but again, you can't tell a whole lot from exhibitions, and I'll tell you, Bill Belichick wasn't terribly upset. His team lost. Houston won 20-9 over the New England Patriots, and the Patriots were kind of a shell of what they usually are and will be when the regular season gets underway. But the Houston Texans win that one, and then out in Seattle, the Seattle Seahawks defeated the Minnesota Vikings 24-13. Really good effort by Drew Locke. The one-time Missouri Tigers quarterback and a kid out of Lee Summit High School who played very well, played against the Bears in the when the Bears played Mizzou back in 2017. So, yeah, he's a guy who has some local identification. Anyway, those two games were last night, six tonight, six more tomorrow night, and then two, including the Chiefs, are on Sunday. Last but not least, if you uh, can't fill your sports cup full with all the football going on this weekend and baseball... Got some racing going on as well, my man. a really compelling race, too. The stop for NASCAR is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Brickyard. This is the old Brickyard 400, but it has been modified. It's now a 200-lap event that's over the Indianapolis road course. What they did at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is establish a a curving, winding road course that, that does involve the speedway itself quite a bit, but also goes through the infield, which is massive, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it's a heck of a challenge for the drivers. But that's what's on hand, and that's coming up on Sunday for NASCAR, and it should be a lot of fun. So the Cardinals again in Florida last night, and uh, how they finish up that series? Well, it was a win. They win. The Cardinals win 5-2. to two. But a very important game because of the appearance of Matt Liberatore. Liberator, for the first time, was facing his old teammates. Liberatore came to the Cardinals from the Tampa Bay Rays. He was Tampa Bay's number one draft choice back in the early 2000s, actually about 2000, or 2020, I should say, itself, and a really top-notch prospect. But the Rays traded him for Randy Arozarena and one other. Anyway, the bottom line is this. Liberatore looked outstanding. He looked like the second coming of Sandy Koufax. He completely throttled his old teammates. He allowed no runs and two hits over eight innings, and the Cardinals won at 5-2. to two. The two runs the Cardinals got were off a relief pitcher, Jojo Romero, in the last of the ninth inning. But a really great performance by Libertor, and he may have won himself a spot in the rotation for next year. This year, well, this year may, may be caught cast to the winds. We never say never. But the fact is that Libertor certainly did not do himself any harm last night. No, and uh, it's. I don't want to say this too little too late, 
But, I mean, it, you know, at this point, you kind of have to start looking towards the future. But, uh, yeah, it's 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 good to see when you see bright spots, especially with the Cardinals. What about the Royals? How they do? Royals fell 2-0. They had a pretty good offensive night, except they didn't score any runs. They had good hits going on. But Boston Red Sox beat the Royals 2-0. And now the Royals come home to Kansas City tonight and tomorrow night. And who do they play? Cardinals. The Cardinals come up from Florida to play these it's a four-game series each year between the Cardinals and Royals, two in St. Louis and two in Kansas City. The two in St. Louis were earlier this year. The two in Kansas City are tonight and tomorrow night. Now, you're saying, baseball fan, wait a minute, what about Sunday? <laughs> Folks, there is no game for either team on Sunday. What? No baseball on Sunday? That's heresy. It is, but that's the way the computer. The computer doesn't have any emotional thoughts in putting together a schedule. It's all about numbers. It so happened that the idle, the idle choice by the computer was a Sunday, so be it. That's the way it is. Anyway, tonight and tomorrow night up in Kansas City. All right. Speaking of Kansas City, my Chiefs finally get to get back on the field this Sunday. Unfortunately, it's not at my holy ground, Arrowhead Stadium, but it's down south in New Orleans. The interesting thing, they will be facing off with Derek Carr and the Saints. They will be, and uh, I'm sure the Saints will want to put their best foot forward, as will the Chiefs, for that matter. But this game is 12 noon on Sunday. It's right here on 104.7 The Cave. And Ned Talk, which is the pre-pregame show, will start at 10 o'clock. And we're here live, Joe and the crew are all right here, and we'll preview the game, and we'll also talk other sports as we do all, all year long. But this is the first of the Chiefs previews, and we will be two hours ahead of time on every Sunday that the Chiefs, or whatever day the Chiefs or are Or prime play. times, which we got a lot of. We only have two. <laughs> dude, there's only two regular season noon start games for the Chiefs. And two! How many Mondays are there? Two, I think. Um, there's think a lot. That's all they're allowed, two. Yeah, two Thursdays, uh, two Mondays. So, And then, I mean, the prime, we're a lot of mid-afternoon games on Sunday, and then a few Sunday night games, too. So, Man, you know, I... I <laughs> It's funny because you wanted this so long for, as a fan, you know, and there's a part of me that's like, God, I do miss those brisk cold Sunday mornings when we started at noon all the time. Uh, I know you do. You you may miss them, but this old man does Ah, well, hey, I just like it. Ned, you have a great weekend. Go Chiefs.